Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock TO Studio and today I'm sharing with you my project for the hashtag art hop primitive hop. This is a group of people on YouTube with videos. You go to the description box below, click on the first link and it will take you to the next video and you can go through all the videos when you come back to mine you will know that you've completed the hop. This is about primitive art and when I think of primitive art the first thing that came to mind to me is folk art. Definition of folk art is folk art encompasses art produced from an indigenous culture or by peasants or other laboring townspeople. It contrasts to fine art as folk art is primarily utilitarian and decorative rather than purely aesthetic. So basically <laughs> in English that just means that folk art is produced by people um, who are decorating their home. Maybe it's uh, quilts, maybe it's um, toll painting, maybe it's painting on a saw. Um, decorative but yet also useful as opposed to being so high and mighty that it only can be hung in a museum. So this of course really appeals to me because I like things that are useful. Um, you can really fill up your house with stuff that's just collecting dust <laughs> really easily and also my style of art kind of is um, more craftsy than it is like real super fine realistic um, art like you know still lives and oil painting and things like that. I like I like things that are fun and make me smile. Um, one thing that I did notice when I was researching folk art is that a lot of the um, the themes of it are about everyday life. So maybe it's paintings of a village, maybe it's paintings of a farm, um, things that that people would do when they were working, uh, people in the fields, things like that. So I decided to go ahead and go with that theme and also to make it more utilitarian I decided to paint on a paper sack because you could use it as a gift bag or you could also use those little handles to hang it up on the wall and it would be a piece of art that you could hang up and be decorative so this is just a handled paper sack I taped it off I put something hard on the inside I put a coat of heavy gesso and then I of course made my drawing and then now I'm using the deco art fluid media line paints to fill in all the colors. Um, my scene is a farm with the barn and a silo and as I was um, traveling I noticed and I, I, I people say this this is so common that people say that fields look like a quilt because they usually try to make them square or circular and you know they have the patterns of having the row lines in them and stuff like that and so fields tend to look like a patchwork quilt so I thought it would be fun to make this front area be kind of like a patchwork quilt of fields and so that's what I went with I also saw some other people doing that type of an idea on Pinterest when I was doing the research so um, not exactly a copy but a similar idea that other people several other people have had so uh, I say so too much I don't mean SEW like the quilts I mean so is in also <laughs> but I need to stop saying it so much anyway <laughs> see how my train of thought gets derailed okay that's what happens And now I can't say so. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, um, the per the paints I would have preferred to use on this project instead of these media paints, which I really love for mixed media, um, they're more true to the pigment colors and are actually made with you know the old-fashioned pigments in some cases, unless those are poisonous like cadmium. Um, but that affects the translucency of the paint. So when you're going with a craft paint, it has fillers in it which make it more opaque and I would have preferred probably some like deco art Americana craft paints instead of these but I don't have it because I, I rarely use craft paints and the ones that I have are so dried up and crusty that I just threw them away. Living in the desert everything dries out too fast. 
So had I had the Americana paints, I would have used them instead, but I had these and so I'm using them and in some cases I have to go over stuff to make it, uh, but the colors that are really translucent like the cadmium yellow and the uh, green gold and colors like that, very true to pigment colors, perfect colors, but by nature some of them are translucent, just the way it is. So in some cases I mixed in the titanium white, which is a very opaque color, to make them thicker and, you know, more opaque. But in other cases I just dealt with it. Maybe not happily, but I dealt with it. <laughs> so this is kind of like paint by number. I'm painting in all the areas from my drawing. And then I'm also adding highlights and shadows in some cases, blending in a darker color with a lighter color. Just real straightforward, basic acrylic painting. Nothing fancy. Um, you know, just, I'm just painting. <laughs> this is basically an acrylic painting on a paper bag. I am going to use, uh, de for details, I'm going to use my Posca pens, which are a acrylic paint pen, which is still acrylic, but um, I'm going to do my detailing with that rather than using a fine brush to detail just to speed up the process. This video needs to be around 10 minutes because of the hop because we don't want to like bog down anybody and make them spend five hours watching hop. So not only is it sped up quite quickly but also I sacrificed extreme fussiness that I might have had um, for making it look more homey and um, how a person, just an average person, could do it. Because I'm not a trained person. I didn't go to, to art school or anything. So anybody can do this. So to finish up with my paints, I'm just putting some little dots with the end of my paintbrush to make a sky. I will, of course, put the links to all the colors that I used down below in the description box so that you can find them. These are great paints. I highly recommend these paints. Um, maybe not for this, maybe for other applications. Uh, the Americana paints would have been perfectly fine for this. Or other craft paints. I'm just sticking with the deco art because deco art is what I'm used to. So then once all my uh, areas were colored in the way that it satisfied me. I'm using a fine Posca pen in black. This is the fine point nib in black to go around and add in lines and details to my paper, <laughs> to my painting on my paper. Um, this was fun. This is kind of like zentangling or doodling or, you know, that type of stuff, especially the stuff that I do in the foreground. It's a lot like zentangling. I'm, I'm not good at zentangling. My uh, shapes are not precise enough and I don't have the patience to be super fussy and make them exactly the way they should be. So I won't say it is zentangling, but it's just kind of a doodling idea. <laughs> um, the way I, I do the the front parts. So I'm also going to use a white fine tip on um, some of it and then when I get to the fields in the front I'm going to be using various colors of Posca pens. These pens are just, it's, it's like having a fine brush and an acrylic paint that will draw over everything that is opaque and yet is in a pen format. So it makes things super easy to do gives you a lot more control. So I'm pretty much done with my black lines and a few little white lines and now I'm just going to add detailing um, using the Posca pens in different colors. The sets that I have, one of them is a pastel set that I got and haven't hardly used at all. Um, I've kind of been off my Posca pens lately, I don't know, it's, it's weird. And then I also have some colors from my medium nib set. And then I think I did use one from my fine nib set that you can see there that has originally had eight colors in it. And I'm using a lighter version of the color 
that I filled in the square with except for in some cases I might use a darker version but basically I'm using a coordinating color the same as the color or similar to the color that the background is painted so it's it's more subtle detailing than using the black or the white because those would be really intense um, you'd see those like I want it to be more subtle than that so like in this case I'm using this um, almost skin tone peach from the pastel over the orange and uh, I have a pastel yellow that I used over the ochre uh, this pastel uh, pink coral color over the red um, I used the brown over the kind of burgundy color um, yeah just picking them as you go you know not too cra going too crazy this is the case where I used the darker version of the color um, using the fine tip green to make kind of like a little little tiny flowers or something and then I put white dots in as the centers so I hope you've enjoyed this project there's a lot of different variety of the things that are in the hop um, what primitive art means to different people obviously is going to be different so um, I've watched a few of the videos I haven't watched them all but make sure that you go and watch them all and that you leave a comment and um, you know give it a thumbs up be kind to these people subscribe if you haven't already subscribed to their channel same goes for my channel and that's it for me thanks bye bye